yeah, I know the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame isn't really about rock and roll, and its credibility is just above the laughably awful Grammy Awards. But I'm going to talk about the 2024 Hall of Fame nominees anyway, because it's still a big deal in the industry. And a few things need to be said about this year's list of nominees. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Crayson and you're watching Music Mentions. Well, the 2024 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame nominations just dropped. And with this, we get the typical arguments about the worthiness or unworthiness of the nominees, why many of the artists in the list aren't really rock and roll, the predictable discussion about artists that should be in the hall but aren't, and the start of the social media lobbying for the fan vote for particular artists. By the way, the fan vote accounts for about 0.1% of the total votes. So it really doesn't have a meaningful impact, just so you know. Today I'm going to go over the list and include a list of artists that I think will be inducted and a list of artists from the nominees that I think should be inducted. Note that the inductees should be announced sometime in late April. First, however, I'm going to address the elephants in the room. Those artists that should, by all accounts, have already been inducted in the hall, but for some reasons unknown, have yet to be inducted. What are the most egregious omissions in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? First, I think we should all agree that this is not a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. It's more of a popular music Hall of Fame. I think we can all agree on that, right? Let's keep in mind that there are currently 378 inductees in all the categories in the hall at the time of this video, and that the first induction class was in 1986. Here is a list of the most egregious omissions, in my opinion, what I call the snubbed list. Note that I'm probably still missing quite a few, but this should give you a good idea. You'll see we have the artist's name, the years they were eligible, and the number of years they've been nominated, including this year's nominations, by the way. You'll see I've highlighted rows where an artist has been nominated for 2024. Bad Company, Big Star, Blue Oyster Cult, Blur, The Carpenters, and Diana Ross, for Christ's sakes. Here, we've got The Jam, Jethro Tull, Joy Division slash New Order, who were actually nominated last year, but sadly not this time. And I don't know why they were nominated together. They were two separate bands. We've got King Crimson, Motorhead, there's Megadeth. These are all omissions that, in a fair world, would instantly delegitimize this so-called Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And here, of course, there's some more. We've got Pantera and the Pixies and Slayer and the goddamn Smiths, Sonic Youth, the amazing Stone Roses and Thin Lizzy. These Hall of Fame voters are living in a different musical planet than most of us music fans. I don't think that's up for debate. They should all hang their heads in shame. And here we've got Tool, War, Wilco, X, XTC, and I'm sure that many of you out there have other artists that aren't on my list that you can't believe haven't been inducted yet. It's all very mind-boggling. So now that we know that the Hall of Fame is laughably ridiculous, let's take a look at this year's nominee list. So the 2024 nominee list includes 15 nominees. Honestly, compared to previous years, I think this year's list is actually really good, especially with the inclusion of Oasis, which should have been nominated five years ago when they were first eligible. But Dave Matthews Band? Really? Now, I've got nothing against them. I've actually seen them live before, and they were okay but they really shouldn't be in the hall until all the artists on my snubbed list have got in. Sorry. Eric B. and Rakeem? Not my jam, but it's understandable why they were nominated. Cool and the Gang? Same as Eric B. I understand the nomination, but not really my thing. Mariah Carey? Gag me and shoot me. The only list she belongs on is the most overrated artists of all time list. 
Mary J. Blige, same as Eric B. and Cool and the Gang. Understandable inclusion, but not really my jam. Now let's take a look at who I think will actually be inducted from this year's nominees list. We can expect anywhere from five to seven inductees from this list, so I'm going to select seven. My guess is that they will go with Cher because she's an absolute legend and should have been in the hall years ago as a solo artist. By the way, Sonny and Cher have not been inducted. Eric B. and Rakim, legendary and influential hip-hop duo, will likely get a nod in their second nomination. Mariah Carey, because regardless of how awful I think she is, she's made a lot of money and is plugged into industry heavy hitters. We've got Mary J. Blige, the queen of hip-hop soul, very influential and well-respected. She should be a shoe-in on her second nomination. Ozzy should get in because he's goddamn rock and roll royalty and should have got in years ago just on the strength of those first two solo albums. And who doesn't love Ozzy? Then we have Peter Frampton because of his massive Frampton Comes Alive double album, his incredible guitar playing, and because he's in poor health these days. He's likely to get the sympathy nod here. Sinead O'Connor is a shoe-in because she died last year and everyone was reminded of her awesomeness, a true rock and roll spirit. So now let's take a look at the artists from this year's list that I think should be inducted. Foreigner, a famous snub that should have been rectified years ago. Simply a great and wonderful 70s and 80s band with some wonderful albums and songs. Jane's Addiction, one of the finest, most innovative rock bands from the 90s. To this day, no one sounds like Jane's Addiction. Oasis, one of the biggest and most influential bands in modern history. They are one of the last truly great British bands and their influence has been massive. I suspect they were finally nominated after five years of eligibility due to Noel and Liam Gallagher's solo successes, especially Liam, who is drawing massive crowds to his shows where the spirit of Oasis is alive and thriving. Ozzy is the king, Nuff said. Peter Frampton, for the reasons I mentioned previously. Sade, because her music and sound remain unique and timeless a brilliant artist that deserves any recognition the industry has to offer. Sinead O'Connor, because of her superb singing, superb albums, and her rebelliousness and challenging of the status quo, which is really what true rock and roll DNA should be made of. So that's my take on this year's nominations. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has very little credibility for music fans, but it's still a thing we music fans have to deal with, I guess. Like the Grammy Awards, it's really not about artistic merit or influence at the end of the day. It's more of the perspective by the music industry elites who are often out of touch with the real music fans and who place more importance on money factors and trying to stay PC with their picks. But I do have to say, that the nominations this year are some of the better ones, except for Mariah Carey, of course. Anyway, throw down in the comments your thoughts on all of this. I want to hear your guys' opinions so we can tussle in the comments section about this year's Hall of Fame and this year's list. Thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate you cats watching my channel and my videos. It seems like... People are starting to dig the channel, so that's because of you guys, and I truly appreciate that. Please give this video a like, hit the subscribe, notifications. I will see you guys next time.